Hello, I'm Mimi, and today we're going to do a little Q&A while I draw an illustration on my laptop in Photoshop. I'm drawing a character with a cat from a Draw This In Your Style challenge on Instagram, just because that's what I'm drawing for Instagram the day I film this. And I'm going to be answering some questions that I got you guys to ask me on a recent YouTube community post. So the first question is from Neharika and they asked, can you please share how you went from traditional art to digital art and which app you used? So I started doing more digital art last September in 2020, which is a bit over a year ago now. And I always knew I wanted to be able to create digital illustrations, but found it easier to build some foundations with pencil and paper first. And it was easier for me to build an art habit that way. I already knew how to use Photoshop for graphic design and also had dabbled just a little bit with digital art in it previously, but mostly using the path tool rather than freeform drawing. So once I was quite comfortable drawing with pencil, I started trying to create some simple illustrations in Photoshop. Some of those early Photoshop drawings were a mix where I'd draw in pencil, photograph it, and then add some details in Photoshop. And then after doing that a few times, I started doing fully digital illustrations. It definitely felt like a step back for a little while because I had to learn how to layer things and how to use the brushes. And my illustrations had to be quite simple in the beginning, but just like with anything with practice, I got better and my confidence increased. The next question is from Sweena and they asked, do you have any tips for getting started in dealing with perfectionism? Also, any books you recommend to help improve your craft? The biggest thing that helped me to get started and then also stay motivated was addressing my expectations of myself and removing a lot of the pressure. I had to tell myself that I was going to make lots of things that weren't great and weren't polished and I knew that I wasn't going to improve unless I was willing to make mistakes. So I really lowered my expectations of what a drawing session looked like for me and what the outcome had to be of it. I used to think I needed to complete a finished illustration and it needed to look good for it to have been worth the time and effort. But actually drawing things that don't turn out how you expected them to look is really valuable learning and getting out of your creative comfort zone is really effective for improving. So changing that mindset in the beginning helped a lot because I was drawing to learn rather than drawing to create something good and polished. I think that helped with perfectionism as well because I was willing for it to not be perfect and kind of expecting it not to be. Posting drawings on social media that I don't think are perfect is kind of a vulnerable thing to do, but it's also really freeing and I found that people didn't really care that it didn't look perfect, especially when I shared that I was learning and that this is part of my journey. Most of the people looking at your art on social media are probably on their own creative journey anyway and can totally relate. As for books, I really like visual development books by animated movies, like from Disney and Pixar. I have a book called The Art of Up and one called The Art of Moana, and they show you the development of the environments and characters for the movies. The thing I like about them is that they're full of draft sketches and unfinished artwork, and they really show the creative process of character designing without being polished. It's nice to have an art book that includes rough art as well as some more finished concepts. So I like that about them. Okay, so I got a couple of questions about learning art or being an artist if you haven't been to art school. And I'll split them into two parts. Part one is from Amber Colored Studio and they asked what kind of things would you recommend for people to learn about art if they never went to any kind of art school? It depends a little on what kind of art you want to make. But for art like mine, I think the most important things are understanding color palettes and why you like the look of certain colors together, drawing the human form, and for this I would learn the classic textbook proportions, but then also how to manipulate them to stylize your own characters, and also how to texture your art. Something that helped me a lot in the beginning was just watching time lapses of other people drawing the kind of art I wanted to draw so that I could understand how their process worked and how they layered things for digital art. And part two of this question, I guess, is more from a professional or business perspective. So Christy asked, can someone who never went to art school succeed in the art industry? What suggestions would you have for getting started when someone doesn't have a super artsy background or a portfolio? I don't believe for a second that you need to go to art school to succeed in the art industry. I think formal education can give you great networks and connections, and for a lot of people, it's a really positive learning environment. 
But if you don't have the opportunity to go to art school or the classroom isn't your thing, then I don't think that puts you at a disadvantage. I studied a minor in visual art at university and studied art in high school. But apart from that, I taught myself from videos online and lots and lots of practice. I built my own portfolio by posting all of my art to Instagram and also using that as a platform to keep me accountable and build an audience and community, which now kind of acts as my network. I think the ability to build your own audiences on social media platforms is such a powerful tool to making our own opportunities. So I would say that if you haven't been to art school but want to be an artist, then do some online courses or watch lots of free online videos, get some art books from the library, teach yourself what you can, and most of all, practice and practice and practice. Build your own audience on a social media platform that you like, and before you know it, you'll have a portfolio and a community. The next question is from Julia and they asked, did you have any concerns when you started taking commissions, such as fearing disappointing customers, charging too much or too little, etc.? If so, how did you deal with or overcome them? I was definitely a little worried when I started doing commissions that people wouldn't like them, but it was just a little voice at the back of my head doubting myself. I knew logically that people ordering commissions knew what my style was and were ordering a commission because they liked my style. And I knew that if for some reason they didn't like it, I would A, be able to make changes and fix it, and B, learn from that experience. I allow all of my commission clients one round of feedback for small changes, and that gives me peace of mind that if I didn't get the hair length right, or it's not the expression they wanted, that I can just make that quick change and everyone's happy. I think it comes down to confidence in your art and trusting yourself. This next question is from Disha and they say, do you think anyone who is interested can have a full-time art career? Is it a wise choice today and can it give a stable income? Well, whether pursuing art full-time is a wise choice or not, I think is up to you and your situation. But I do think that anyone can build a full-time art career for themselves if they have the time to commit to slowly building up their skills, an audience and a portfolio. There are just so many ways that you can make money online now and it can give a stable income, but I don't think it would be realistic to think that anything is guaranteed online and it definitely isn't quick or easy. I'm a year and a half in of working part-time and then full-time to build my art career and just now my income is stabilizing. But I like to think that if you commit the same amount of time, energy and perseverance to building your own art career as you would a university degree, then I don't see why you can't build your art career. If you're in a position where you don't have much time or resources, but you're still committed, then I think it would just take longer and it pays to be realistic about how long it can take because some people start making a stable income after seven or 10 years of building their art career. Basically, I think you should dream big and take whatever steps you can within your circumstances to make them happen, whether those steps are big or small. Okay, so Visual Mind asks, how do you stick to a style without getting bored? I'm not bored of my style yet because I like it and I like drawing and that's just how I draw right now. I think my style is still developing though and if you look back every few months, it does keep changing bit by bit. I try and draw different subjects as well so that keeps things interesting. I don't usually draw too much of the same thing in a row. If I were to start getting bored with my style, I guess I could always just change the way I'm drawing and try new things. I would probably aim to get out of my comfort zone and try drawing things that I find really hard and I think that would be enough of a challenge for me to be entertained by it. So I had two questions about my dreams and plans. The first is from Lara who asked, what are your big dreams for this channel and your Instagram? And Kim's NJ Adventures asked, what do you see yourself doing a year from now? I definitely want to keep growing my YouTube channel because it gives me a lot of fulfillment to share what I know with other people and also it's something that I get to work on with my partner Dan. And now that we're monetized, it would be really cool if we could one day live off of our YouTube revenue together because that would give us a lot of freedoms. So continuing to grow this YouTube channel is definitely something that I want to focus on. I do want to keep posting to Instagram, but I'm not necessarily trying to grow my account there. If it grows, then that's great because the more friends, the merrier, but I'm also happy just maintaining what I already have. I enjoy drawing and Instagram is a nice place where I just draw whatever I want and aiming to post there every week keeps me accountable and keeps up my drawing practice when I have other things on. 
So next year, I'd like to keep growing everything I already have, like my shop and Patreon. But also, I really want to make some courses on digital illustration and having an illustration business online. So that's definitely something I want to do next year. I'm excited to illustrate more picture books, and I'm also excited to share what I know and help other creatives build their dream lives for themselves. So a year from now, I think I'd like to be doing a similar thing day to day to what I'm doing now with lots of drawing and content creating, but with some video courses made and some more picture books illustrated. So that's all the questions I'll answer in this video. I hope you enjoyed this little chat we had together and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.